I'm Sally Bates and I'm going to run through the first year practical exam section B, facial measurements and fitting. This is my patient Michael and we're going to go through all the measurements that we need. So first of all I'm going to do a cover test. So Michael if you look at the bridge of my nose and I put the cover up in front of Michael's right eye. As I take the cover away, look what happens to his left eye. So we have a slight movement there. We'll just check Michael's right eye. No movement. So once again, the movement in his left eye shows that he has a phoria. So Michael has a slight esophoria because his eye turns in makes it a little bit more tricky to measure the PD. So in this case, I take my mono PD rule, cover each eye in turn, and each eye fixates, and I can measure Michael's mono PDs and add them together to give me the binocular measurement. The next measurement is the crest height. So I take the facial gauge, with this it's quite easy, we just drop and stop. Put the 10 degree tilt on the facial gauge and read down through the pupil centre to the lower rim of the eye. So Michael's crest height on the right is 4, and I measure on the left, 5. And I can check because when I look at Michael there's a slight horizontal asymmetry with his eyes. Now the crest height determines the height of the frame on the face. So if I pop this frame on, Michael's eyes are sitting quite high in the frame because the crest is high. So if I wanted to make Michael's eyes more central, I would lower the crest. So let's see the difference that it makes to the frame. So not quite your style, <laughs> Michael, but you can see straight away that the frame is sitting higher and his eyes are more central. And if we try just one more frame, so this very small one, we can see that once again the eyes are a little bit too high in the frame and that's because the crest is higher. So the frame is sitting lower. The next measurement is the bridge projection. So I want to put the cursor on the rule with the window uppermost. And if I ask Michael to face the board for me, that's great. And follow my finger. I'm looking to see if Michael's eyelashes come out more than the bridge of his nose. And they do, so that shows that he's a negative projection. So if you just turn back, that's lovely. And if Michael's nose came out more than his eyelashes, that shows that he's got a positive projection. So the best way to measure this is to stand to do it, and the patient remains sitting. And I put the rule against the crest of Michael's bridge, put it straight, and then just drop the end ever so slightly. And that gives me the effect of the 10 degrees pantoscopic tilt on the face. So if you blink for me, Michael, and tell me when you feel this touch your eyelashes. Yeah, that there. Yeah? yeah? Okay, that's when you stop. And so if I read the rule, it's minus six. Because Michael's got very long eyelashes. So the projection, if we made a frame for Michael, it would have to be built upon the back of the frame to bring the frame from forwards away from his eyelashes. All stock frames, like we have in practice, are made with positive projections. So they're all approximately plus two. So that's why people with long eyelashes often have a problem uh, because they feel their eyelashes touching the back of the lenses. So next measurement is the apical radius. And when we measure this, we always start big, so with the 12, and work our way down the rule. 
so we can see it's getting smaller. So eight is quite a nice fit, but we've still got a little bit of movement. Seven, however, is a little bit tight. Six, way too tight. We're getting a gap at the top there. So Michael, which feels best, number one or number two? Probably number two. Number two. So we'll go with the eight apical radius. The apical radius determines the fitting of the frame around the crest of the bridge. So if we pop that frame on, we can see that the apical there is a very nice fitting. If I put a slight tilt on the frame, it would be perfect. If we try an apical radius that's too large, like this, we can see that the frame rocks from side to side. So it's too big on the apical. So the next measurement is the distance between the rooms. So we had our cursor on the rule, like this previously. So we take it off, flip it over and put it on. So it makes the box. That's how we know that the cursor is correct. So we'll measure the DBR at 10 first. So Michael, if you just close your eyes for me, we want a three point touch. One, two, three. So if I gently squeeze that in, all the time I'm holding the rule at a 10 degrees tilt, and Michael's distance between rims at 10 is 14. Now I turn over to measure it at 15, and I'm expecting the measurement to be four to five millimetres bigger than at 10. Again, it's got a very narrow bridge and I want a three point touch. So that's perfect, not too tight. So reading the rule, 19. So that makes sense. The DBR at 10, so here, was 14, the DBR at 15 is 19. So it's always bigger the further down the nose. The DBR determines how the frame fits down each side of the nose. So with that frame, it's a little bit too big. So if Michael had that glazed with his prescription, then all the weight would be carried on the bridge of the nose and when he takes his specs off he'd probably have a red mark over the crest. That's an extreme version of the DBRs being too big. So next we've got the frontal angles and the frontal angles are just down the front of the nose. So for this, I place the zero on the middle of the crest and take the dangle down the side of the nose. So we've got constant touch down the side. And I read the cutaway part of the rule. So that's just over 20, so I would note 25 degrees. Same for the other side. Read down that side. Again, a little bit less than 30, so I'd go with 28 degrees. It's normal to be asymmetrical. So you can see when you look at Michael, we have a little bit of difference, the way the bone is out on one side more than the other. So that would be the angle of the pads on a metal frame down the front of the bridge. Next we've got the splay angle, and for this it's easier to stand up to take the measurement, but all the time the patient sits down. So if you close your eyes for me, Michael, ideally we would be taking the measurement here into the corner of the eye, but you can see that it's dragging on the lid. So come down the bridge and read into the corner. So again, I read the cutaway part of the metal on the rule. So that's 20. Same for the left. So keep your eyes closed. That's it. And we've got 15 degrees. So there is a slight difference 
on each side because of Michael's bone structure. And that would determine the angle of the pad into the corner of the eye. So the last two measurements are very straightforward. So they're the front bend and the head width. So if you turn that way for me, this is taken without a frame on. So we've got to imagine the plane of the frame on the face. So if I put the rule on the ear like a pair of specs, sit, and I close one eye and I line up my open eye with Michael's crest. And I put the zero on the tip of the eyelashes. Now, Michael's ear joins his head at 87. So I would want the bend slightly further back. So I would order it at 95. So it's just slightly further back from where the ear joins the head. So that's the right side. So Michael, if you could spin round for me, I'm going to do the same with the left side. That's it, so straight ahead. And I measure from the tip of the lashes to just back from where the ear joins the head. So the ear joins the head at 93. I would order the bend at 100. So there's a slight difference. Again, totally normal to be slightly asymmetric. So if you put your head down for me, Michael. Yeah, not too much. That's it. Okay, and I put one finger there and one finger there. I can check to see if there's a difference in the front to bends. And there is, this finger is slightly further back than this one because the measurement on this left side was bigger than the right side. So the last measurement is the head width. So for this we measure ear point to ear point. And the plastic calipers measure in centimetres, but we need to record our measurement in millimetres. So that reads 14 centimetres, so on the form I would record 140 millimetres. And of course the head width determines the fitting down the side of the head. So if we pop this frame on, ideally we want this frame to just touch down the side but to have room at the temples. So if you put your head down we can see that that is going to be a fraction too tight on the side of the head. But that's because the frame, frame front is small. If I put this frame on, you put your head down, that's a much comfier fit. 